Hello everyone, uh, I am Pritam, currently working as a software engineer at AppScore and uh, today I will demonstrate how to backup and restore Elasticsearch using Kubestash. So Kubestash is a Kubernetes native uh, tool to uh, disaster, uh, to recover the disaster uh, in, uh, to recover the disaster and uh, backup and restore uh, database and uh, volumes uh, in any public or private cloud. So our uh, our our segment will be uh, our our session will be pro our session our session will be distributed uh, divided into uh, certain uh, segments. So first of all, I will describe Kubestash backup backup flow, and uh, then I will describe Elasticsearch specific backup process. After that, uh, I will show live demo of backup. Uh, then I will explain Kubestash uh, restore flow. And uh, then I will uh, explain uh, Elasticsearch uh, specific backup process, uh, restore process short shortly. And uh, then I will uh, show a live demo of restore as well. And finally, we will have a short Q&A session. Uh, so I will use KubeDB to uh, pro provision uh, Elasticsearch uh, in my client cluster. Uh, and uh, you can uh, install KubeDB uh, through, uh, through the Helm commands shown here. So let's jump to the kubestash backup flow. So if you are taking backup, then the user has to uh, create backup storage first of all. This will contain necessary information about the backend, uh, which where we will be uh, saving our snapshots. And then user has to create backup configuration. This backup configuration will contain information about uh, the DB, uh, which will be taken backup. Uh, then we have to refer the backup storage here as well. Uh, plus it will contain multiple uh, sessions uh, and the kubestash operator will create one cron job for each session and there will be an interval in cron job and in each interval one backup session will be triggered and then kubestash uh, operator will create snapshots and the number of snapshots created by kubestash operator will be equal to the number of uh, repositories mentioned in the uh, backup configuration and each session we can have multiple repositories as well uh, i will explain uh, this in the in the uh, backup configuration yml shortly then kubestash operator will resolve the add-on and then it will create backup job as well this backup job will this backup job will actually uh, it actually execute the uh, logical uh, logical backup process and after that uh, i will uh, i will uh, i will uh, take backup from the elastic search and dump the snapshots in the uh, backend so that's it with uh, backup flow and then in case of elastic search specific backup process uh, first of all kubestash uses restrict to take uh, to uh, perform uh, backup uh, logic actually and but uh, in but restrict doesn't uh, support piping multiple uh, back multiple dump outputs uh, in a single command so what we have to do is uh, we have to use a directory within an interim volume which is actually a kubernetes uh, persistent uh, volume and then we will take backup of that directory so in this process uh, so this is a specific uh, backup process for elastic search actually so now I can actually jump to the live uh, backup demo. So before actually jumping to the uh, live demo, I would like to explain YML shortly first of all. So I will start from uh, here. So obviously first of all, user has to create that backup storage. So in case of backup storage, I have to mention metadata first of all. Uh, so here is name and namespace of my backup storage. Then in case of in the spec section, first of all, we have to mention the storage provider, which we will be using here. So I am using Neo Destry, but a user can use uh, GCS, Azure, Swift, and B2 as well. So whatever uh, back, whatever storage provider you are using, after uh, after mentioning it, you have to uh, provide necessary information about your bucket. So here uh, I'm using S3 bucket, and in the S3 section, I have to provide the bucket information first of all. Uh, this is this is my bucket name and uh, the endpoint uh, and region uh, which I have uh, where I have created the uh, backend. And after that, I have to mention the prefix as well. And finally, I have mentioned the secret, which is uh, an S3 secret. Uh, basically, it contains secret key access key and uh, restrict password which all are uh, some uh, keys actually then uh, in usage policy i have allowed all the namespaces uh, 
you can uh, you can mention the names where you want to uh, where you want to take backup or uh, restore then uh, default is true default uh, this section uh, refers uh, that it is the default uh, backup storage uh, for this uh, elastic namespace for example if you create a backup configuration uh, in elastic namespace and you don't uh, you don't uh, refer any backup storage there then uh, this uh, this uh, backup storage will be taken as default finally i have mentioned uh, detention policy uh, i have uh, kept it wipeout uh, wipeout means if we delete this backup storage then all the snapshots stored in the backend will be deleted as well uh, i can also use delete here if we keep it delete then actually it will delete the backup storage from my cluster but all the uh, snapshots will be kept in my uh, backend so this is backup storage and then we also have another CRD called retention policy. Uh, this it ref, uh, it actually uh, first of all obviously I have to mention the metadata. And then in the spec section, uh, first attribute is max retention period. It is the interval till which uh, snapshot will be kept in our uh, cluster. And uh, sorry, kept snapshot will be kept in our backend. And then I uh, then uh, in the successful snapshot section, I will uh, kept I will keep uh, latest ten snapshots in uh, our backend. Finally, I have uh, I have also mentioned usage policy here, and I will take uh, I will I will use it I I can use it across all namespaces in my cluster. Uh, so I uh, before use before applying uh, backup configuration, I should apply these two IMLs. Uh, so now let's move to the terminal. So first of all, I will apply backup storage uh, backup storage here. So backup storage is created. I have to check either it is ready or not. Uh, yes, we can see it's uh, it's it's ready here. So now I will apply retention policy as well. So that's it. We have applied both uh, backup storage and retention policy in our uh, kind cluster. So now I will I will uh, explain the backup configuration YML. So as usual, uh, first of all, we have to uh, mention the metadata here, the so name and namespace, namespace of our backup configuration. Then first of all, we have to mention target. Uh, target is uh, the DB which will be taken, uh, which will be taking backup shortly. Uh, I am using kubedb to deploy Elasticsearch. So obviously my API group is kubedb.com, find this Elasticsearch, and then it is name and namespace of my DB instance. And after that, I have to mention the backends. First of all, I will mention the backend name here. Then I have to refer the backup storage, which I created earlier. Uh, here I have mentioned the name and namespace. And then we have to mention that uh, retention policy as well, which I have created uh, shortly, which I have created recently. Then, then here is uh, the session segment. I have only one session, but you can have multiple session uh, for uh, like uh, daily backup or weekly backup. Uh, but I am using only one session, so I will explain it now. Uh, first of all, you have to mention the session name. Uh, then a session is limited number of uh, number of backup job which will be uh, kept in the cl client client cluster. And then uh, scheduler is actually content of the cron job which will be created uh, because of this particular session. Okay, so after that. Uh, I will explain it as well. Uh, schedule means in each uh, one minute, uh, we will have a, a, a backup a session triggered in our uh, cluster. And then successful job history limit is the number of successful job which will be retained in our cluster. Failed job history limit is uh, same that uh, number of failed job which will be retained in the cluster. Then in case of job template, I have mentioned backup limit, which is the number of time our job will be uh, will take restart uh, uh, before uh, it is uh, declared failed. Then in repository section, again, we can have multiple repositories. Uh, I have only one here. Uh, first of all, name of the repository is mentioned. Then backend name. Backend name must be one of the backends mentioned here. And then directory is actually the path in the cloud where snapshots will be stored. Then encryption secret is actually just uh, a secret which will be used to uh, encrypt the snapshots, uh, encrypt the data in our snapshot actually, and uh, it 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 will contain a it will contain a key. And then uh, I have my add-on section. Uh, add-on here is Elasticsearch add-on, and then logical backup is the function which will perform Elasticsearch specific backup logic. Then I have a job template uh, where I have mentioned. Then I will I will uh, perform all these operations as a non-root user. 
So now we can apply this uh, backup config YML. Okay, before applying backup config YML, we have to actually insert data. I will use uh, kubedb uh, CLI uh, for to insert uh, data in my uh, in my DB instance. So what I will uh, do is I will just run a command and if I run it, then uh, here it is uh, successfully data is inserted in our uh, DB instance. Okay, so uh, DB is ready here. So now what we have to do, we have to apply uh, backup config YML. Okay, uh, our backup configuration is actually created here. Uh, we have to wait till the face is uh, declared ready here. Uh, so yeah, face is ready and we can see our cron job is created here as well. Uh, it will trigger a backup uh, session shortly. Uh, I have I have kept it only one minute, so it will not take uh, more than that. Uh, we have to wait for a while for this. It will appear shortly. Uh, here it is. Uh, we have got our um, backup session here. And uh, pod is running. And job will be completed soon, I hope. It, it has triggered a job. And uh, yes, a job is completed here. So backup uh, backup has been uh, taken uh, successfully. Now what we have to check it check it uh, in our uh, backend uh, that either our uh, data is uh, kept data is safely taken backup or not. So what I have to do is I have to just move to the backend and check either I have got this or not. First of all, it, this is my backend. Uh, name of my backend bucket is PDS. Then uh, I had that uh, prefix elastic search in our YML. So if I go there and then obviously in sample, uh, this is the path which I declared in my repository section. Sample cube stashes and uh, then DB name is usdeb. Uh, and then uh, here is my repository snapshots and all. So I will go to the snapshot. Here is here is my snapshot. Uh, it has uh, stored successfully in uh, my backend. So that's all from uh, backup side. Now I will explain uh, restore. So let's uh, jump to the restore part now. So uh, after taking backup, there can be uh, some disaster uh, situation as well. So while taking restore in that situation, first of all, user has to create a restore session. Uh, this restore session will uh, contain necessary information about a target DB and besides the data source, uh, data, data source will uh, contain the uh, repository uh, information and the snapshot name as well. So kubestash operator will watch a restore session and it will uh, pause the backup configuration if it exists in the cluster. So then it will resolve the add-on for uh, Elasticsearch specific uh, restore process. It will create backup job, which will uh, execute Elasticsearch specific restore process. And then uh, we will take the snapshot, uh, we'll take the snapshot uh, from uh, the backend and it will data will be restored in the uh, Elasticsearch instance as well. So this is uh, our Elasticsearch uh, restore flow. So, and then Elasticsearch specific uh, restore flow is exactly opposite to the Elasticsearch specific backup flow. We are uh, using an interim uh, directory here as well. First of all, we will load our uh, data from the, we will load the snapshots from the backend in the uh, interim uh, directory, which is actually a Kubernetes persistent uh, volume. And then our data will be retrieved in the indices of the DB instance. So that's all from the Elasticsearch specific restore process. And after that, I will uh, explain the, I will, uh, I will uh, show uh, cubes, I will show restore demo as well. So before showing restore demo, I actually have to uh, explain the restore YML. So restore YML is actually quite simple. I have to first of all mention the metadata obviously. And then uh, in the spec section, I will mention the target first of all. 
in the target section, I have name, which is obviously yes, uh, dev and namespace is elastic. And then I'm using uh, kubedb uh, to, uh, to uh, kubedb to uh, for deploy my elastic search here. Uh, after that, I have data source here. Uh, I have to mention the repository name uh, and then snapshot. I'm taking the latest snapshot taken uh, by uh, taken uh, by my uh, taken by uh, backend. Then I have to mention the encryption secret here as well, since I have to decrypt the data encrypted by the encrypted by the, the encrypted in the backend. Then obviously I have add-on, uh, which is Elasticsearch add-on is uh, is the name of my add-on here, and uh, the particular task which will uh, perform the restore uh, logic with uh, logical backup restore. And in the job template, I mentioned uh, that uh, I will uh, I will perform this operation as non-root user. So let's jump to the terminal now. So here, first of all, what we have to do is we have to delete the backup configuration. Since we, in case of Elasticsearch, we have to take uh, the we have to take we have to restore the DB in a completely uh, completely fresh instance. So we have to delete uh, DB here. But before deleting DB, we must delete backup configuration since this backup configuration actually contains uh, that uh, reference of our current DB. So first of all, what I have to do is I have to delete backup configuration. Name of our backup configuration is CSDB backup. I will delete this first of all. And after deleting this, now I will delete my DB as well. That's it. I have deleted my DB as well. Now I will again. Uh, now I now one thing I should uh, I should obviously show that uh, we don't have any uh, PVC here, so we can't actually data can't be restored from PVC. We don't have any PVC here. So obviously we have to use that snapshots in uh, snapshot in the backend to uh, restore the DB again. So let's apply the YML first of all. It will take 30 to 40 seconds to get ready, I guess. Uh, it will not take more than that. And after that, if it gets ready, then immediately I will apply. Uh, I will apply a restore uh, session as well, and I will check that either data is uh, data is restored or not. We have to wait for a while. Okay, DB is ready here. So now we can actually apply our restore session. We can see the restore session is uh, created here. It's uh, in the running phase now. And soon it job is also created. So soon it will be completed. Yes, it's completed here. Now what we have to check is either data is restored or not. So for that, uh, first of all, I have to get the secret here. Yes, I have got the secret. We'll split the terminal first of all, and then Then I will just apply this uh, check either I do have the data here or not. But before that, I have to obviously port forward here. I port forward it and then I will simply apply this uh, apply this curl command. Uh, here it is. We can see that uh, the data we uh, we inserted and that uh, previous uh, DB instance is uh, successfully uh, restored in our currently currently uh, currently deployed fresh instance. So this was basically restored demo. Now uh, any question? Uh, any 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 questions?
you can ask if you have any query uh, regarding this webinar. Okay, I think there is no query. So thanks for watching uh, till now. And uh, that's all from my side. I hope you find it insightful. Uh, thanks a lot.